welcome to Broken Entertainment. And today we have some news that about Patty Jenkins' vision for the movie Rogue Squadron. Now, Patty Jenkins, if you're not familiar, she directed Wonder Woman and she directed and wrote Wonder Woman 1984. And she's got some other credits to her name as well. Um, I think she did a very good job directing Wonder Woman. I, I've seen some people question if she was even involved in directing Wonder Woman because of the differences in Wonder Woman versus Wonder Woman 1984. And yes, she directed Wonder Woman. There, was, there wasn't anybody else directing that, and her name stuck on it. You can see the directorial style is the same between the two movies. The difference between, and we've gone over this before, but the difference between Wonder Woman 1984 and Wonder Woman is that Patty Jenkins wrote the script along with somebody else for Wonder Woman 1984, Jeff Johns, I believe. Whereas Patty Jenkins did not write the script in Wonder Woman. And in the original Wonder Woman, she wanted to have a, and then they just talk it out kind of resolution like we have in Wonder Woman 1984. The studio said no. She does not have a whole lot of script writing credits to her name that I am aware of. And she jumps into Wonder Woman 1984 because Wonder Woman was so successful they gave her creative control. And you see what you get. <clears throat> but let's go ahead and get into this. This is Unbounding into Comics. Uh, so director Patty Jenkins, known for her Wonder Woman films, recently laid out her vision for the upcoming Star Wars Rogue Squadron film. The Rogue Squadron film was announced back in December 2020 during Disney's 2020 Investor Day. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy announced, and to close today, I couldn't be more excited that our next Star Wars feature film will be directed by Patty Jenkins. Patty, director of the Wonder Woman franchise, will be bring her inspired vision to Rogue Squadron. This story will introduce a new generation of starfighter pilots as they earn their wings and risk their lives in a boundary-pushing high-speed thrill ride. She concluded the legend of Rogue Squadron has long been beloved by Star Wars fans and will move us into a future era of the galaxy. So, uh, just judging by this part, and this is just Kathleen Kennedy talking, but Rogue Squadron is not going to take place during any of the previous movies. It's probably going to be either post-sequel trilogy or during the sequel trilogy. She's talking about moving the galaxy forward. Uh, following the announcement, Jenkins shared a video to social media where she described that she hopes to make the film the greatest fighter pilot movie of all time. Uh, good luck. And I don't just say that because I don't have faith in her writing. I say that because there's some very, very good fighter pilot movies out there. Jenkins spoke with the Associated Press. She revealed that Rogue Squadron is the next film she's working on. Uh, I'm in love with all three projects on my plate right now. I'm definitely doing Road Squadron next, and I'm excited to do Wonder Woman 3, and Cleopatra is coming along great as well. I forgot she was doing Cleopatra movie. She went on to detail what's influencing Rogue Squadron. I think the Michael Stackpole books and the video game and all the Rogue Squadron books. Now, see, this is good to hear, right? They're talking about the source material. Or she's going to draw influences from the novel, and the following novels, she's going to draw influence from the video game. This is all good news if you're a Rogue Squadron fan. But, and there is a but, and we'll get to it. There is incredible history that is really important to honor. Here it comes. And yet, it must be brought to a new age, because we have to tell a new story with it. These are two separate statements in this sentence. The first one is, it must be brought to a new age. And the second one is, we have to tell a new story with it. So the first sentence is, or the first part of the sentence is the most alarming. Okay? If you know anything about Lucasfilm and how they talk and how they code things and how Patty Jenkins has worked with Wonder Woman 1984 about the way things have been done in the past with Star Wars and Disney, you kind of know where this is going. That is a code phrase for we have to make it check all of our boxes. We know from experience we've got a checklist and we've got to have a this and a that and a those 
and we're going to make these characters, and they're going to be the main characters, and we're not going to give them any qualities other than that check mark. And that's the problem I have when people at Lucasfilm and Disney talk about diversity, because they don't mean real diversity. Okay, real diversity is, oh, hey, uh, I wrote this story. It's got an awesome character in it. Here's, his, here's their character traits. Oh, also, it's a black person. You know, where them being black is not the only characteristic they have, but rather they're an amazing character first, and then these other components inform who they are, but are not the only part of who they are. If you want good examples of what I'm talking about, Ripley from the Alien franchise, she has these defining character traits, and also she's a woman. But when I'm talking about this false diversity, this shoehorned stuff, now, now we're flipping the script. Now you have, she's a woman, or maybe we'll put in some other character traits somewhere. Nobody really wants that. Okay, More diversity is good. More actual diversity is a good thing. People of different backgrounds, people of different races, people of different genders, etc., etc., that's all good, but nobody is one thing. Nobody is just a woman. Nobody is just gay. Nobody is just bi, whatever it is. Nobody is just anything. We're all complicated people. Humans are complex, difficult creatures, and when you narrow them down to one aspect to, to make sure you check a mark on your checklist because you want to get certain points from certain people on Twitter, you, you do a disservice to everybody. And we've seen that over and over again with entertainment where not just the people you might think would turn away but the people that they're trying to get the attention of also turn away. Um, a very good example of this recently is Q-Force. If you're not familiar, Q-Force is a Pride Month TV show. It's, it's stereotype after stereotype after stereotype after stereotype. Are, this is real. Okay? These are the characters. And it's directed, obviously, at the LBGT community. LBGTQ, etc. community, and they hate it. Because look at it. I mean, aside from the, the piss-poor quality of the animation, these are all stereotypes. And it's because they reduce the characters to, oh, this is the bi character, this is the gay man, this is the lesbian, this is the transgender, and they ignore everything else, and they just want that thing to be the character, but nobody is one thing. We're all different things at different times, even in different times of the day, we're different things. And when you have beautiful, complex characters like Ripley, it works very well. The diversity works great. But when you shoehorn, when you make it just about one aspect, when you cardboard cut out this thing, you end up, at best, with a boring character, and at worst, with an awful awful stereotype. That's what it must be brought to a new age means. And then we have we have to tell a new story. That I think that part's okay. I think we have to tell a new story is saying they're gonna put it they're gonna draw influences from the books and the video game but what they're actually gonna do is put it in the more modern era of Star Wars and tell a new story. So the framework of the old with a new story coming out of it and, and that's fine. But there's a lot to be concerned about when somebody in Hollywood tells you something has to be brought to a new age. We've seen it over and over again. Okay? Um, but this is one sentence. And it's very easy to respond to that one sentence. It's very easy to be concerned by that one sentence. But we need to temper that with the realization that we don't know a whole hell of a lot about this yet. We can go off of what they've said and done in the past. We can go off of what the director has done in the past. We can go off of the coded language we've seen Disney use in the past. But we can't say for certain, oh, this is going to be pathetic. This is going to be... We need to keep an eye on it is what we need to do. Be concerned. 
Be aware of the reasons to be concerned. But I think we need to hold off a little bit. More, more information will come to light, and then we can go from there. But there's definitely, to me, reason for concern. But I think the reason for concern, at least for me, goes way past this sentence. My reason for concern is Patty Jenkins is involved in writing the script. So, anyway, she continued, And so you're trying to blend the best of everything and make it the great fighter pilot movie, which I've always wanted to make as well. It's a big brew of things you're trying to put together and still keep a very simple story. The director then stated, You're trying to bring the best of yourself and use it to make something beautiful that honors the legacy before you. But, of course, it's a huge amount of pressure, and Wonder Woman was a huge amount of pressure as well. So it's not a totally new feeling. It's rather interesting that Jenkins referred to still as... Okay, and this is just them clapping back at Disney. I don't care. Oh, here's the other reason for concern. So who's the screenwriters? Patty Jenkins. The vision for the film is not Jenkins, not just Jenkins. As, as it was recently revealed by The Hollywood Reporter, she is co-writing the script with Matthew Robinson. So what has Matthew Robinson written? Let's get a deeper, deeper dive than what they've got. All right. So we've got The Invention of Lying. Never heard of it? The Power Inside. This is a TV miniseries. Jerked. Haven't seen it. Black Box. Um, TV series. I think I've heard of that. 73rd Golden Globe Awards. Wow. Uh, Monster Trucks. Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Let's take a look, because if this is what I think it is, yes, it is what I think it is. It's this very strange movie. Um, now, weirdly, Dora and the Lost City of Gold did all right, and I think, I, I haven't seen it, but uh, if I were to guess, it's because it kind of, sort of, faithfully ages the character. Now, to me, it came across as really creepy, because you're used to Dora as a toddler standing and now all of a sudden she's a college student and put her in her old clothes and it's just strange um but i mean you know people liked it to an extent uh 2020 golden globe awards love and monsters live die repeat and repeat little shop of horrors remake so you've got this guy writing the script who has written very few scripts with very little to show for it. You know, his biggest thing may very well be Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Not sure how exactly to respond to that. But I'll say this. I don't want Star Wars. I, I would be fine if... Matthew Robinson was writing the script with somebody more experienced, but he's not. He's writing it with Patty Jenkins, who is a fine director and a terrible script writer with very little experience doing it. That's not a good combination. We've got the writer of Dora and the Lost City of Gold and the writer of Wonder Woman 1984 putting this script together. That's what worries me more than anything else. You know, the other stuff is coded language, and we'll see what really comes of it. But this this is where you should worry if you're a Star Wars fan. This is what you should be concerned about above and beyond anything else. So this is where they go over his script stuff before. But yeah, this is where I worry more than anything. You know, will Lucasfilm be Lucasfilm? Probably. Will Patty Jenkins be Patty Jenkins? Probably. But on top of that, you got this guy and Patty Jenkins writing the script. I, I don't think that's a good recipe for success. Could be wrong. Could be surprised. Let me know what you think in the comments if you think this is going to turn out well or not. But I have two areas of concern, and this is by far the biggest one. If you can't put together a good story, I don't care what you do with diversity stuff. If you can't put together a good story, it's going to suck. And we don't need more bad Star Wars. We just don't. What? Who decided this? That's what I want to know. 
Did Patty Jenkins decide this? Hey, I'm going to get this guy who's written ba basically nothing so that I can tell him what I want and what to do and he'll just go along with it? I really hope not. Uh, as for her, as for how far they are into the script writing process, Jenkins said back in January, we're very far into the, we're finishing the treatment basically, which is pretty big. Ends up being like where you're fairly close for a well-long screenplay by the time I'm done with the treatment in my process. So yeah, we've been working on it for a while. It's going great. I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about the story. Yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. But uh, these two as writers, that's that's a big worry. That's a big worry. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you next time.